Hey guys, I want to talk to you about an important topic today. I feel it is a pretty large misconception that you have to be lightning fast to be successful as a creator, whether that's an independent one or a professional one working as a concept artist or illustrator. I feel that the pressure of social media and, and everything that that kind of brings upon us, or maybe it's just us over consuming gorgeous time lapses that are heavily curated and edited by already working professionals, or maybe it's that occasional horror story that we kind of pass on by word of mouth that does happen when we hear about some terrible industry crunch uh, that comes up from time to time. Either way, I've worked over the last 12 years with big clients and with small ones. And I wanted to assure you today, it's not nearly as daunting as it may seem. So today I'm gonna be discussing, in my experience, the real time timeframes that kind of come up with various size projects and art types, as well as various strategies for project management, uh, time management, as well as work-life balance as a creator. And I'd like to just thank uh, my awesome supportive patrons for bringing this topic up this week in our Discord. So with that said, let's begin. All right, so what is the typical usual time frame on deliverables for a project, or maybe it's for an image or a set of images. So I'm gonna break down in what I've experienced a little bit on the day-to-day. -day. And I think that's a first place to kind of start this uh, discussion, is that when I do contract work, um, even full-time contract work uh, for studios in the past, usually it's set up up front, you know, it's discussed between myself and whoever is uh, managing the project. We're going to either meet you know, once a week, maybe at the end of the week, we're gonna even meet daily, I've done a lot of daily meetings, or maybe we'll just meet once a month and just kind of touch base every day passing work back and forth. So all of that's kind of figured out for you and it's going to be determined by whoever the boss is, right? Maybe that's an art director, maybe it's a producer, maybe it's someone in between like an art lead. And so usually the first thing that has always come up from a various type of assignment or task is referencing uh, and understanding what you need to do. And there's a ton of types of tasks that I've kind of been, or my studio has even been tasked with creating uh, in the past. So here's a great example uh, put together uh, by uh, my art lead, Tyler Bourne, and you can kind of see the the prompt <laughs> or the directions for this is like, we, we need a fast food joint, and they kind of provide a little bit of reference that you kind of see up here on the top of the screen, as well as a 3D based block out. So all we're tasked to do is come up with various options to set dress this scene with. This is a pretty small, pretty straightforward task. The reference is already there, so we don't have to spend extra and additional time sort of figuring out any of those logistics. It's just kind of using our design skills to map these aesthetics and surface treatments to the model. And as you can kind of see, this is a few of the awesome little examples that uh, uh, Tyler whipped up for this particular assignment. Now, because of how straightforward and simple this is, this would be like a 24 hour turnaround. That means the next day, 24 hours from given the assignment, approximately, you, you would report in, present the ideas, and it would then be discussed. If, if they're not approved, it'll come back to you or back to, you know, back to the artist and you continue to work on whatever revisions may need adjusting. This is another task. I'd kind of consider it mid-level in terms of the overall uh, time or difficulty. It, it was pretty straightforward, but not quite as straightforward, I think, as the last one, as there was more room, I feel, for creativity and interpretation with this. So as you can see, the directions were, you know, we're looking to have a concept for a black forest that's similar, you know, to Germany and, and has lots of pines and boreals. Um, so just the focus on very tall pine trunks, you know, come up with an environment. This reference, this much reference was provided, luckily enough. Um, and so this process might look like in terms of a realistic time frame, maybe we'll block out the first half of the day to doing the, the pre-vis stuff, like the, the thumbnailing, maybe additional reference gathering, but essentially like a four hour chunk of time, maybe an hour each to do some thumbnail sketching. Then of course at lunch or by midday, we can present them feedback will come back usually you know within an hour 
And then of course we could spend the rest of the day taking whatever idea was there and polishing it up to present to the next day's meeting. So again, the overall time frame on something like this I, usually is always eight to 10 hours. If it takes a little more, it takes a little more. If it takes a little less, uh, you know, it, 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 it happens occasionally and it's never really a big deal if it kind of sways either way. As long as you're re keeping an open line of communication with whoever, you know, you're reporting to on a task. And, and again, it's usually through something like a Slack or a Discord where you're usually just kind of typing or communicating. This is a very different if you're working in a studio and you have the, your boss or your lead like right next to you and you can kind of just, you know, swivel your chair and, and say, hey, how is this going? Is this looking good? And you can make probably much quicker adjustments. Now, the last thing here I want to kind of talk about would be like the finalization of a concept. And I'll touch upon this on and off throughout this video. So this is key art. Key art is a little more involved. It's basically like a fancy illustration. Uh, there's going to be a lot more back and forth and a lot more troubleshooting that happens with these because they do have to look a little bit nicer. There has to be a higher sense of rendering. There's a little more art direction that goes in. This isn't I guess the standard sort of production art um, that I previously kind of shown. It just has to kind of communicate more ideas to more non-artists. So the time frame on these generally, it could be like a week where, you know, in work hours. So it could be two to three days, it, depending how quickly you can land uh, the task. But these do take longer and clients are aware of that. And they're certainly way more forgiving in regards to how much time these sort of take. Now with like concept art uh, specifically, there's a huge aspect of it that just kind of goes into pumping out multiple versions of the same thing, right? Now this is the standard sort of production art. And these, it, there's a lot of fluctuation. Uh, they can be very simple, they can be a little more complex. As you could see, it could potentially range from designing a whole plant layout to literally just like a singular tower building or you know, small little organic prop which there's just different complexities and different challenges that go into each. So like for something like this, for me personally, you know, this would be like a few hours. Uh, maybe this is a few hours because a lot of it is like you do something once pretty good to kind of figure out that process. And the process that I use often is just to duplicate and replicate parts of that and then to kind of change up 30 to 70% of that base. You, you could, uh, you know, someone like Tyler could whip something like this out in like half a day and do an all right job. And then of course we get the feedback. We're able to apply more of the environment and you know, have the better sense of variety, right? Overall with what the client was looking for. And then it's just iterating. Now uh, with working with a lot of online clients like this, it, it's literally like volleyball, right? You, you spend like a half a day or a day doing a concept, you send it up forward, it's either approved or it comes back. And it was very normal, you know, in, in all of my experience that ideas can come back and forth for days before they get right. And I do think that this is where I want to say, um, it was never expected in most cases that the first time I turn in something that it would be absolute, I'm going to absolutely nail it. It's going to have like a final level of polish or clarity, or it's going to just absolutely work on the first go, right? That, that's very rare. So it, again, it's always like an ongoing conversation. And this is what I'm recommending to a lot to all of my students is like, it's it's your communication skills. It's not only how you're speaking with and, and kind of navigating the brief, you know, from the client asking the right questions to the to the client that maybe they have information that they didn't provide because they just didn't think of it. And so you look at things and then you can dissect it. Like, and then you could ask a question. Do you have a specific color theme you want for, you know, such and such? Or is there a certain mood or shape that you want to use to start with this idea, right? Like it's just kind of talking, which you get better at, of course, through experience. And then of course, the other side of that is the clarity of your designs. So I never focus on making a perfect drawing. I never even really focus on making a, a pretty painting. That's not the goal. I just want to clearly communicate my idea so that whoever gets it next will understand it. And that's a huge part of it too, because there's a lot of scenarios where you kind of just have to turn in your art. And if you're not meeting on a call, like face to face to discuss it, it's, it's going to be passed around the art department and then some. And they're going to have to look at and discuss your art without you there, which is a huge thing that's happening more and more of because more and more work is remote. So the work has to speak for itself. 
So let's talk now budget, scale, and scope, and overall project management, as this comes in a large number of varieties, and it's going to change, of course, depending on how large or small a client is, right? So typically, as a smaller client, I usually just kind of meet with, like on Discord, that I get like onboarded right into their little team chat. Then I just start mocking things up and getting it over to them as soon as I can. So when I'm discussing these sort of projects with a client, I might just say, hey, uh, can I have a week and I'll get you something you know, in front of your plate <laughs> in a week's time? And they're usually, like, yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty open and forgiving. Or I'll just simply ask, do you need this by a certain time? But more often than not, in my experience, when they need something by a very specific date, they will let you know that. Of course, they're going to let you know it because they want it and they want it fast. But if they don't bring it up, I'll be like, yeah, you know, I, I could probably do this in a week. Does that work for you? And again, usually they're pretty fine with that. And these smaller teams, of course, will have less artists, but a bigger client is going to usually be a little more selective and be a little more um, on board sometimes with that feedback. And that's fine because they have the budget too. So if they can stretch an idea out for a week or two and just, you know, have you constantly refine it, that happens. Like this example here. Um, that I worked on with uh, Tyler Bourne for, it was just some key art illustration. And then like, basically once we got it to this part, they're like, okay, that looks good in terms of what we want, but it doesn't look good in terms of quality. They're literally just saying, you know, hey, this doesn't look super finished. You gotta add polish, right? You gotta add that little art grease to it to make it look shiny and, and fantastic. That's when, you know, I start sweating <laughs> a little bit as a creator. Like, okay, now you, know, you roll up your sleeves, cuff them up, now, now I gotta get down in the weeds here. Right, and really start adding all that polish. And, and luckily, the, the team over here at Brush Sauce uh, did it. They did a really good job. And it just went through a number of different refinements, you know, just betting, making the lighting 10% better, making the texture 10% better, cleaning up the shapes 10%. All of these little things added up to be an absolute sort of banger, um, you know, of an image. And of course, the client was um, really satisfied. But that whole process, we were not sure whether or not we were going to stick that landing. You know, it's like evil couldn't evil up there. No, gonna, not going to do it, not going to do it, not going to do it, right? Doubt is swarming us. We're, we're sweating. And of course, you just land it. The client absolutely loved it. And only then it's like, you know, we could take a little breath. But again, it was time frame wise, which is the theme here, uh, it, it went on for like a week and then some. And it's technically not that complicated of an image. Um, usually balancing multiple projects. I, I try to have specialists. This will come up, uh, you know, a few times here. So here's a little example of some marketing art the Brush Sauce team completed uh, earlier this year. And again, it's a huge kind of collaborative effort. And this is how I balance and juggle doing multiple projects because I'm not a spring chicken anymore. I have family and other, all kinds of obligations that I did not have in my early 30s and in my 20s. So I try to be a little smarter about it. Again, I look towards specialists. I have my eyes on the whole industry to see who's looking for work and who's good at what. So when, when certain things come up, I definitely try to get the right person for the job. So for me that on an idea like this, a time consuming marketing illustration to keep me free to allow me to teach and allow me to, to make these YouTube videos, right? I'm gonna basically do a quick, really ugly block out sketch thing like this. This is super ugly right up here. But I know like the guys that I show this to will absolutely understand this. And, and in this case, I had my guy Kyle on this job and it's like, here's the idea I shared with some reference and like, we need to make this an awesome steampunk sort of city. And you know, Kyle basically immediately went to work on blocking this thing out, trying to capture the lighting and, and basically assemble everything based off my really quick and ugly layout. And then, cause I'm talking with the client on this. I'm like, what are you looking for? What do you need? How it should feel? And then I start to channel that to the team of artists. And then I, meanwhile, while Kyle's working on that, I'm showing, you know, Anna, shout out to you, Anna, who does a great job with a lot of the character illustration work that comes out of the studio. And she's sketching in all these characters on a Kyle's mock-up. And I'm updating her with his latest version and, and the lighting adjustments that the client needs. She's sketching in the characters. And then basically it all will land at my desk probably at the end of the week. And then I'll just kind of, uh, I will put it all together, add the extra lighting effects and get it in front of the client. So yeah, like uh, something like this basically took a week, week and a half with a little bit of leeway there. Again, I, as long as you're communicating with the client when they need something by, that is the most important thing. So of course I did have the support 
of a team to be able to do this and a bunch of other things at the same time. And I want to, of course, thank you guys and especially anyone on, on the Patreon to, to help make this creative cycle uh, happen because that allows me to hire you guys and, and artists and, and keep you know, producing content. So it's like a, a cycle that I'm <laughs> definitely thankful for for you guys. Um, but let's say, right, if, if you're younger, if you don't, if you're not affording a team, you could just simply collaborate too with like a few other people and you could simply just collaborate with a, a few of your peers as well. You could, you know, people that basically could supplement your strengths or were, you know, fill in on your weaknesses and you could do art trades and like, hey, I need help on this project. And I, I started like that, you know, like 15 years ago, I was like collaborating with my peers on, you know, certain little tasks, not maybe to this scale or scope, but much smaller things. And, and that, that builds good working relationships. So that's what I would advise in regards to how I'm doing the day to day stuff. On, on a particular design or, or just like my art schedule in general, it's simple. I like to do my design oriented tasks up front. Here's an example of, of a project from that same one. So like I want to figure out the layout, I want to figure out the design language, I want to figure out the basics of the lighting and the mood early in the day, right? Again, that first four hours when I'm the freshest, when I'm the sharpest, when I can communicate better. And then essentially after that is, again, the idea is blocked out and I'm sending it to uh, the 3D team over at Brush Sauce, whoever that might be for the day. I'm gonna work on my admin stuff. So for me, I'm gonna check back on my emails. I might you know whip up any kind of marketing thing or, or get on a call to discuss the marketing thing with my marketing guy, Ben, shout out to you. I might do some teaching. I might you know, catch up on billing stuff or I'm gonna gather references or uh, resources essentially for the next steps of a particular image. So right, if I front loaded the day with the design heavy tasks, stuff that mentally drain me, uh, my afternoons where I kind of lull out, very easy stuff where I don't have to think, at least creatively, on a nearly as a high level. And then I'll catch up at the end of the day, at the end of the evening, you know, after my kids go to bed or maybe while they're in the bath or something, and I can do the leftover tasks. So in this visual, it's like, okay, now I get to render. Now that I get to do detail, which is way easier when that comes back with, you know, with a little bit of a better 3D render is basically like this and I basically just have to drop some photos into the background, stitch it all together and then paint in the little details. So like, hey, this is gonna take two billable days and it's probably only gonna take me a day and a half. That'll give me like a runway of four hours of like these kind of fixes to, to cover myself. Otherwise, just simply have a conversation with your client and be like, hey, this is gonna take a bit more time uh, can we negotiate for a, you know this much more billable time? So as long, like I said, communication is everything, and as long as you're open and forward with your client, you know during the process and a lot of it at the start, you're going to be in an all right position. So all this kind of leads to my last point for this video, right? That work-life balance and adaptability, and I do feel having a balance in that is sustainable you know, for long-term creative growth. I have videos on just like, you know, how to sit in the chair, that adds to it. Not burning yourself out by not stressing yourself out. I think a lot of burnout comes from just us just stressing ourselves out. And I'm giving you permission here, of course, today, just to simply slow down. It's not always like some big old case race, right? Like you can get a lot of creative growth by actually just going very slow and, and very deliberate, and that's okay. And if you're working on slow and deliberate tasks, not like frantically running around, the work is gonna benefit from that as well. Of course, art direction can change sometimes on a project. Budgets are usually pretty fixed, but sometimes there's rush jobs. So make sure, of course, you factor in, if, if a client talks to you and like, hey, we need this in two days, you know, raise the price. Uh, like I said, it, you should find out at the start whether that's gonna be a rush job or not. So some jobs inherently will be a little quicker than others. Just make sure you're compensated for that inconvenience. Flexibility, that that's a huge thing too. I, I've built my career out of being well-rounded. You know, I used to do all of these tasks myself. I've just found it ultimately in the, in the long run. Like I could grind out this character stuff, but it takes me a long time. I could do a lot of this 3D stuff, but it takes me a long time personally. So I try to find people that are just innately as good or, or, or better than me, or even in some cases, some people that I can train up. And I like to collaborate. I think that's a huge part of it. And that's a huge part of why I don't burn out um, is that I can delegate and offload at least some of my tasks. 
And this is a huge part of continuous learning too. I'm still learning new tools and techniques all the time because I've been teaching some of my courses at, at least at CGMA for like eight years now. The industry changes, uh, software changes, so I'm constantly trying to stay on board with a lot of that. Sometimes not as good as I should, so I can learn like these new techniques. Like like this week, I'm really diving back into after a way too long hiatus into 3D code, and I'm having fun kind of figuring out and learning some of these basic tools to make really fun ideas. And of course, when you can stay up to date, you know, with all of this. Uh, it, that of course leads to new opportunities, it leads to new networking scenarios, right? But if you're continuing to learn and develop your skills and challenge yourself by stepping outside your comfort zone, uh, you're gonna get a certain amount of personal fulfillment from that as well. Like I, I feel great after I work through a problem, learning a new software or, or pushing through a new technique to do a more complicated idea. It happens, you know, and, it, and it's definitely rewarding, but it's a little stress inducing in the time. So like I said, uh, the takeaway with this video is like clients are usually pretty forgiving as long as your communication is really good and you're setting your own expectations up. I do feel it is good to slightly over deliver on those. Maybe that's a topic for a whole other video. You guys will have to let me know below. But again, my, my clients, especially with illustration stuff, they've always been really lenient with how long it takes to do something. Like when we were illustrating for Blizzard, some of those pictures would go on for like a month and a half, two months, and you're just checking in and you're reporting at every stage. They want to see all your thumbnail sketches. They want to see refined sketches. They want to see color sketches. Then they want to see the final painting, and then the final painting will go through a couple revisions, right? So it's a system and it's a process. And when you understand that and you, you work through a client like that, again, you're kind of getting checked at goalposts, right? At every step of the way. So no one's getting a curveball at the end. Like you won't have drastic changes most of the time. And, and you're kind of already knowing how well it's working or how well it's not. And you're gonna be getting a lot of feedback in that cycle. So when we see really big and really complex imagery, you know, in illustrations, the clients understand that there's more complexity there. They're gonna give you a bigger landing strip in terms of how you're gonna do that. All right, so it's not as bad as you guys think, and it's not like you have to sweat it out for like 40 hours and, and you know, in like three days and like just grind stuff out. Um, if you procrastinate, if you're unorganized, if you do not understand your own workflow, or if you do not understand how long it takes you to do something, that's where the problem is. So if you feel like you might struggle with any of these, just produce a lot of art. Produce it comfortably at your pace, and then just tally up over time, like over months, how long something approximately takes you. You will know if you've done it long enough. And then that way, that is the big conversation point that happens when you discuss this with a client. You'll know and you can communicate that, all right? But guys, let me know what you thought, of course, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you for everything.